to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory and praise. We thank you for this Sunday, the Christian Sabbath day. We glorify you for it. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and will do. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick and shut in, in the hospital, in the prison cells. We ask, Lord, that you would have mercy. Let your mercy be rendered to them. That you would heal those that are on their sick bed. That you would set the captive free. He who the Son make free is free indeed. Let there be indeed freedom experienced by all we pray. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. We thank God, amen, for this privilege and this opportunity. As you see, I'm sitting, I'm going to sit so I can teach this thing because surely this is going to be a part two. I warn you in advance, you will get some of the message, but you won't get all of it today because this is an, is an intense message sent from the Lord. And I'm going to say, go Jaguars, amen, do fall. I need them to win. I need them to win. <laughs> I need them to win. They're in Philly, and that water, ain't, that water ain't looking good on that field, so I need, to, I need the Jaguars to show up and show out as I need the Holy Spirit to do today. Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles, this is going to be a good teaching uh, from the Lord. Amen. He put this on my heart before the storm. I had this message. The Holy Spirit gave me this message before Ian struck Florida and other parts of the United States and Caribbean. But I got this message and and you can turn to Genesis chapter six. Genesis chapter number six. I'm going to start reading at verse number five. I'm, I feel kind of rushed, but I'm not going to rush. Uh, we're going to start at verse number five. So please, whatever you do, pray my strength in the Lord, because I'm really excited about this message. I feel like a, 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 a mother that's pregnant, and even though she can't wait to have the baby, she knows it's not going to happen until nine months. Uh, until that nine month period comes, she can't deliver. So those three trimesters have to come by unless there would be a premature birth. So I don't want to premature birth this message. I certainly want to take my time and do it just like the Holy Spirit gave it to me and how he wants me to present it to you. So Genesis chapter number six and verse five. And God saw that he no, I'm sorry. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah, somebody say Noah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them that behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 
Somebody say warning, warning, warning. When God had enough, when God had enough. I look at this text and I'm just going to move uh, very slowly upon it. I'm not going to rush. But as I look at this text and look at the message here, I don't think I ever saw it in, in light of the way I see it now. Because if we really think about it, the warning was for Noah and his family. God told Noah that he had favor with him. Good God Almighty. That he walked with God. See, it's, it's something about when you walk with God. See, God let Noah know what was about to happen. We're going to get into that a little later, but I want to I want to I want to paint the picture for you because it's so important that we get the gist of the message before we get into the meat of the message. In every song they have what they call a bridge. They don't get to the bridge. They don't just jump there. If you just jump to the bridge, you mess up the whole song. So you have to gradually get to the bridge and when you get there, Wow, everybody being wow. Because this message right here, we see that Noah, and, and, and Noah's name means rest. And my wife is here today, and we thank God for her. Amen. Uh, she asked me during Ian, she said, why, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? I mean, why you don't seem to be concerned? Because I don't, I don't let it bother me. I don't let storms, I don't let um, normal patterns of life, if, if it's anything that does uh, uh, have a connection with nature, I see God in control. I give God more control than the storm. I give God more control than the rain we, we even when we experienced in our wedding, it it was raining. The forecast was horrible. It rained all over Jacksonville. Everywhere I went, I saw rain, and I prayed. I said it's gonna stop. I said I could. I, I I spoke to the four winds, the north, south, and east, and the west, and I commanded the rain to cease and the sun to come out. Now, if you don't have faith. It's impossible to please God. You got to have faith to please God. So if you don't have faith, you ain't going to move God. So, so we prayed. She prayed. She didn't know I was praying. And, and I didn't know she was praying. But we both was praying in, in separate locations that the rain would stop. Not only did I pray that the rain stop, but I prayed that the grounds would dry up. Lord have mercy. Now, here is faith. The scripture says in, in Hebrews, uh, that is not my message, <laughs> but, but here is here is the, the uh, Hebrew, uh, it says, it says, by faith, the elders obtain a good report. Now, if you if you see in, in there, you'll find Noel in that in that hall of fame of faith. But 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 here we go. It says with with out faith is impossible to please God. And then it says, by faith, I'm a holler. It says, by faith, the elders get a good report. Now, the good report, now it's when you obtain something, that means you got to get it from somewhere. You got to you got to depend on a source to obtain it. So my source, your source, by faith, is God. So by faith, you get what you need from God. I'm about to holler. Isaiah says, Isaiah uh, 53, uh, whose report, yeah, whose report will you believe? See, if you believe God's report, then it's written. The report of God is already written for the believer. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the report of the Lord. See, you, you got to know what the word says in order for you to stand on what you need to obtain. <laughs> See, I, I had, I, I, I had, I say had, 
I had a, a, a great leader, a man of faith, uh, by, the, by the name of Lawrence C. Callahan. He was a man of faith. I, 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 I learned from that man. I, that man would believe God for anything. It, it didn't matter. I've seen him lay hands on a dog. The dog was sick. I've seen him lay hand on Fifi and God healed Fifi. Fifi had come from across the street and got ran over by a car. He felt sorry for the dog, called the dog over to him, laid hands on the dog, and Fifi got healed. Y'all better hear me tonight. So, but but also I experienced the the church having events, having uh events on the on the property, tents events, feeding uh we we had uh services on the on the on the grounds. And I seen the rain come down uh, very, very hard. I'm talking about storm. I've seen storms just on the day of the event. And I've seen that man stand out and, and pray and rebuke the storm. And not only did the storm go away, the sun came and dried up the mud. Lord have mercy. So, so I was raised up around faith. In the faith, I was raised up around faith. This man of God trained me how to believe God for anything. But watch this. So I pastor in Columbus, Georgia. We're getting ready to have an event, and it rains. I go outside. I remember what he did. I did the same thing. See, that's what Elisha did. Y'all better help me today. See, that's what Elisha did. He learned from Elijah. And what he saw Elijah did do, that's what he did. Same thing with uh, Timothy, with Paul. So you got to have good God Almighty. Every understudy have to have, you got to have a successor. See, and your successor, glory to God, have to be, you have to mentor them. And, and I love this man. He was just like a father. I, I, and, but I loved him so much that I, that I, I gleaned from him. I, I watched him. And I put to practice what I saw him do. See, the reason why many of us are not successful in our walk with God, because we don't have a successor who we marked. <laughs> see, the proverb writer said, mark the perfect man. Yeah, see, so you got to put a mark on somebody mm, that that you look up to. Ah, I'm about to preach. I'm about to preach now. To the storm. Ian came to Florida and other parts of the Caribbean. What I did notice was what, what, what most of us get tired of, but you need to watch it. You get tired of watching CNN. You get tired of the news all day saying the same thing, same thing over and over, and they show you the worst of the storm. You get tired of that, don't you? But you got to remember something. That what they're doing, the meteorologist, the meteorologist is reporting what is to come. <laughs> I'm going to preach in a minute. Their job is to, to warn you. Somebody say warn, warn, warn. So warning, warning, warning. That's what, that's what was taking place. They were warning us about what was to come. They was telling us that Ian was coming and, and, and they was building it up. Ian started out 150 miles an hour. And they were saying, if, if it comes to, to land like that, it's going to wreck everything in its path at 150 miles an hour. Now watch this. And they kept reporting it. Even in, in areas where it wasn't that bad, they kept reporting it. Now, what happened when they did that? They caused us, and this is what they said, the warning was, go get your water. Find shelter. Then they say it. And they'll tell you, they, then they said, make sure you lock down everything that's outside. Don't let nothing be loose so it can fly around and break windows. Then they warn you. They also said, evacuate for those who needed to leave. Those who left, watch this, those who left the security of their homes thought before Ian came, their home was secured. Y'all better help me today. So sometimes you have to leave what you deem as being safe, what you deem as being secured for a more secure place. 
Now, here is God telling this man by the name of Noah who found favor with God. He found favor with God. I told my friends, I said this. I said, if Jesus can sleep through a storm, so can I. <laughs> if I see him sleep, I'm going to sleep. But somebody get me. You got to get this. Let me go to uh Psalms 127, I believe, in verse number two. This is not in the message, but I got to say it because it came on the tape. Listen to this. Psalms 127 and verse number two. Psalms 127 and verse number two. It is vain. Listen, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved. What it says? Sleep. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See I can sleep through a storm. <laughs> I, I can sleep through a storm. Because the Lord give a sleep. To his beloved. Are you his beloved? Now if, if you don't. If you don't think you his beloved. Then stop quoting Beloved, I wish above all things <laughs> that, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Somebody say, stop saying it if you don't believe it. And if you are his beloved, then you know he'll give you sleep through a storm. Oh, see, Jesus, watch this. Jesus was so, he, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Watch this. His only begotten son was lying in the hinder part of a ship during a storm sleep. Uh, can somebody answer this for me? Because it, it goes against nature. How in the world can you sleep in the bottom of a ship and the water is filling up the top and it don't wake you up? When you get that answer, let me know. See, God, protects us through a storm. Somebody said God protects us through a storm. All I saw was like a fall mist through the whole entire storm in Jacksonville on my side of the town. That's all I saw. Somebody told me, he said, every time a storm came, it used it. I, I, I wonder why it always tear up Don Avenue. That's what they used to say. That's what I heard them say. I, I wonder why it used to Tear Don Avenue up. Well, and it didn't do it this time. Well, I, I would say because we were on the Don on Don Avenue. <laughs> ah, ah, see, because the Lord says this, y'all better get this. You better get this. If you don't get nothing else, you better get this. He said in in Psalms uh, ninety one, in verse number one, He that lives dwells cohabitates in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under his shadow. Good God Almighty. <laughs> oh, and under, say, 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 the secret place of the Most High shall abide under his shadow, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Say, and under his wings, somebody said, under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See, see, when you understand where you stand, Ooh. Oh, see, well, see, when you understand where you stand, I stand under. Somebody say, I stand under. I stand under the most high. I, I don't try to stand over the most high. I don't, I don't try to stand on the side of the most high. I try to stay under the most high because under him is his protection. That's, what, that's, why, that's why Noah found favor with God because he stood under God. Lord have mercy. Because the scripture says, I didn't say it, the scripture said, the scripture says that he that Noah had favor with God. And, and this is how he got favor because he walked with God. Yeah. See, see, when you walk with God, that's that's symbolized that you have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna get I wish I had some uh, amen. Can y'all say amen over there, over there, right over there, some other stuff. Just can the wall say amen. But listen, see. See, what, 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 what is he saying here? See, we always say Enoch walked with God. But you never hear nobody say Noah walked with God. See, you got to understand something. Even Adam walked with God. 
Because if he didn't walk with God, then why would God go looking for him in the cool of the day? <laughs> Lord have mercy. He, see, God will look for you when he's used to you. <laughs> I feel good today, y'all. See, if God get used to you, then you will have uh, God talking about you. You will have God announcing your name and says, he walked with me. You, you'll have God saying, he have favor with me. See, when, when, when he says that, that Noah, when, when, when God called Noah's name, mm, he saw a man like he saw Abraham. Abraham didn't start it. Noah did. Noah starts out what Abraham would later finish. Noah had to walk by faith. Ooh. <laughs> so he can pass it on. That's why it's so important. We as parents and we as uh, believers that we pass our faith on to others. Because the scripture says, I don't say it, the scripture says, the scripture says, says, says you, we are living epistles written and read of men. See, Noah had to live a life that, 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 um, that Enoch would catch on to later. Mm -hmm. And not only Enoch catch on, but Abraham will catch on later. Not only Abraham, but Isaac will catch on later. But not only Isaac, but Jacob will catch on later. Because Jacob had to have faith to wrestle with God. Mm. <laughs> see, see, you don't wrestle with something if you don't expect nothing. See, he wrestled with God because he was expecting something from God. He said to him, he said, I'm going to wrestle with you. And he wrestled day and night. The scripture says he wrestled all night long. And he said to God, he said, I won't let go mm. <laughs> until you bless my soul. I won't let go until I find favor in your sight. I, I, I won't let go. And he smote him on his thigh, broke his thigh, and he still kept wrestling. Mm -hmm. you got to be determined you got to be relentless see the, the minute the problem with many of us i heard reese talking to one of his friends today and he said you quit too easy <laughs> see that's the problem with many of us we quit too easy yeah we, we when it don't look like we gonna win we just throw in the towel See, you don't understand you getting ready to win and at that at, at that last second you can win hmm uh, what, what, what do you mean preacher what, what I mean by that there was a, 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 a swimmer who, 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 who vowed to say that I'm, I'm going to swim all the way across this ocean and, and they were swimming and they were swimming a good swimmer too and they were swimming and they were swimming and they were swimming and they were swimming and then here drops the fog Ooh. <laughs> the fog drops and, and while they were swimming they start losing their pace they start losing their determination to swim all the way across the ocean. And as they was losing their determination, and, and I, went, I had me a witness. See, the, what I'm saying here is God is trying to tell you we walk by faith and not by sight. When he told Noah, he warned Noah and told Noah, he said, Noah, I need you uh -huh, to, to build. And he didn't even tell him no ship. He didn't tell him no ship. He just told him, I need you to build something. That's what he told him. I need you to build an ark. That's what he told him. See, an ark is a place of safety. Mm. <laughs> See, he didn't tell him, don't go build no ship. Don't build no yacht. He didn't say that. He said, I need you to build an ARK. <laughs> I need you to build an ark. And he gave him uh, the dimensions. He gave him uh, the tools. And he gave him uh, 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 the supplies that he needed him to use in order to build this ark. Uh-huh. And they see, I'm about to holler. See, you got to understand something about God. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it a little bit. I'm gonna peruse through it a little bit and I'm gonna tell you some stuff. I'm gonna tell you again. But but I want you to understand something. God would tell you to do something when he already know what the end gonna be. Uh see in the story, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. In the story there was two birds. Uh-huh. In the story there was two birds. There was a raven and a dove in the story uh-huh and i ain't even got to the flood yet but i'm gonna tell you this part because this is important uh, because it's very important to my message two birds one was a raven and one was a dove now we understand ravens eat any and everything don't we know that and we know that a dove is is very peaceful and they land see they don't fly all day they land and if they can't land they're gonna keep flying uh-huh they're going right back from where they came from <laughs> that's what the dove would do so here's these two birds 
and and no one let both of them go. The raven, uh, the, the scripture says, uh, he 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 didn't come back. He 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 must have found some something, something to eat somewhere. But the dove, the dove flew away and came back. And the reason why, and this is this is the, this is a caveat here. The dove came back because it had nowhere to land. Ooh. See a raven to take a chance to get something to eat and get eaten. <laughs> but the dove, oh, he's a peaceful bird. The dove is a restful bird. <laughs> oh. See, see the bird symbolizes the dove symbolizes rest, just like Noah's name. It's it's amazing the two attachments. Noah's name means rest, and he's set a, a bird free. A dove by, uh, that symbolizes rest. Somebody say, stay in your rest. Don't let what's going on around you cause you to panic. Uh, stay in your rest. Stay, stay in your rest. God said, he said, uh, uh, through his son, Jesus Christ, he said, my peace I give unto you. Uh -huh. Now, if you have his peace, I, I, I want to know something. I want to know something. Just like the devil and, and the Holy Spirit can't dwell in the same place at the same time, then I don't believe, y'all brother, walk with me, I don't believe turmoil and peace can rest at the same place at the same time. I don't believe it. I, I don't believe uh, torment and, and peace can be in the same room at the same time. you either going to have peace or you're going to have torment. Oh, why y'all looking at me funny? See, see if you're going to walk in his peace, don't walk in chaos. If you're going to walk in his peace, don't walk in confusion. <laughs> Don't try to figure out when God already got it worked out. Uh, somebody said he already got it worked out. See, one thing I love about Noah, Noah did not reply to God. That's what faith does. See, faith don't reply. Faith just act. Yeah. See, when, when God told him to build the ark, I want you, I want you to follow me because it's so important. Uh, verse number eight. Y'all listen to me. Listen to me. Now, in verse number eight, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In verse nine, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And y'all know a generation is 40 years. The man, the Bible says the man live <laughs> and God. All right. The, the Bible said the man uh Minister, Minister, I see you, I see you, I see you, Pee Wee. Uh, that's not y'all, y'all, y'all go, y'all let me go, y'all let me go away with it, get away with that. That's uh, my friend, Minister Pee Wee. <laughs> but, but, but you got to get this about Noah. Noah, the scripture says, I don't say it, but the scripture says, the source, the, the scripture says, Noah walked, now watch this, he was a just man in all his generations. Now, if you read further, you see that Noah lived about something like 600 years. So if he years, he lived 600 years and you take 40, mm -hmm, take 40 and, and divide that by 600, you'll see how many people he affected in his time. Lord have mercy. You, you'll see, oh, I feel good today. See, you, you, you got that God, God created you so you can make an impact on your generations. See, what it tells me is this, when God give him the instructions, when God gives him the warning, he gives him the warning because he had an effect on generations. Are y'all walking with me? For, for at least, watch this, one year, one, one generation, that's 40 years, Right? He lived to be some 600 years old. So he affected a lot of generations. So they watched him. They watched him enough ooh, that he should have had an impact on them when they saw him building that ark. Pee Wee, I believe if you had an impact on me and I saw you not walk in an era, when I saw you never miss the mark, when I see you and I saw you, you always do things the way God told you to do it. And you do things what and you do, what God tell you to do. If I see you consistently like that, and then I see you building an ark, I think I'm going to come and inquire. I, I think I'm going to come and, and ask you. I don't know what, or at least say, I don't know what that is you building, but uh, can I get in on it? Can, can, can I get in on that construction that you build? I won't be standing off somewhere marking you. <laughs> I, I won't be somewhere off with the gay sales. Y'all know them naysayers and the gang sales. You, they be standing off to the side 
say, oh, man, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that apparatus is that he building you. He always doing something by faith. Yeah, he, he always doing something that God tells him to do. He's always doing that God thing. Yeah, yeah, you ought to, you ought to get associated with them folks who are doing that God thing too. Because what I, what I want to say, what I want to say, I want to say this. If you read the text, and I'm going re- to start reading some more in a minute. Read with me verse number 17. It says, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood. You hear this? The warning. I bring a flood of waters upon the earth to, des- to destroy all flesh. Somebody say all. Wherein the breath of life, I'm getting ready to wipe them out. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Mm -hmm. But somebody said, but that's a, that's a, that's a negative. It, 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 it's, it's like a subtraction in math (laughs) that, but takes away from what was previously said. Watch this. So, so, but with thee, somebody said with thee, see, God says, I'm a, I'm going to make an exception to the rule. I did say everything going to die. I did say everything that breathed. I'm going to take life from it. But, somebody say but. But with thee will I establish my agreement. And thou shalt come into the ark. Thou and thy sons and thy wife. And thy sons' wives with thee. Somebody say everybody's coming but, but the other folk. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Now this, I ain't going to talk about that. Y'all, y'all can read just like I just read it. It said what male and it was say and female. Now you figure out why God did that. And, and of course, and it, male and female, and, and, and you know, you, you got to have those two ingredients in order for God to do it again. Somebody said, do it again. Now God got a plan. Somebody said, God got a plan. And, and he could have said, he could have said, just put all the males on the boat, on the ark. He could have said that, but he didn't say that. He could have said, put all the females. Y'all better help me out. Uh, he, he could have said, all the females, put all them on there. Uh, but he didn't do that. He, uh, even though the females, could, they, they can produce, but they can't produce a seed. Uh-huh. Yeah, they can produce, but they can't produce a seed. So they, in order for them to produce, they got to have a seed. Oh, y'all better help me today. So they, they, you got to have the male and the female. Yeah, yeah. Even, even God, uh, in all of His omniscience, in all His wisdom, in all His splendor, God said, "Be male and female." What, what's this? Of fowls after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort. Uh huh. Male and female. I'll just say that again. Shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Now, I, y'all help me. Help me. It says in Isaiah chapter one. It says that says that that, that, that uh, 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 ass knows his master's crib. Uh-huh. And, and God said, I wonder why y'all why, why I'm having such a problem with my people obeying me, even when an animal would obey his master. Y'all help me today. And, and I want to understand. And I'm saying, warning, 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 warning. God have had enough. <laughs> Uh, uh, see, what, what I want to say to you today is you got to understand something that I want to say. If if Noah can build an ark and the animals are instructed two by two to get in line to get on the ark. Lord have mercy. Uh, are they in line, uh, Pee Wee? Are they in line too? And, and Noah, Noah ain't calling them. Noah ain't guiding them. He ain't blowing no whistle. He ain't uh, ringing no bell. Uh, they heard God say, get on the ark. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and this proves something. I, I, I got to say this. I got to say this. Animals take on the nature of their owner. The scripture says the earth was corrupt and wicked. Wickedness was everywhere, and 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 God didn't. Not only did He destroy uh, the the living humans, He destroyed some living animals that took on the nature of their owners. See, you can you can be around people and you can be wicked just like them. Mm-hmm. Somebody turn the AC on. It's hot in here. Uh, getting hot in here. <laughs> 
listen, see, see, animals take on the nature of their of their owners. You ever seen somebody look like their dog and the dog look like them? I've seen them. I've seen them. y'all that dog looking at me funny. I've seen people look just like the dog. I've seen the dog look just like the person. <laughs> Have you seen it? And not only not only the, the dog look like the person, I've seen people dress the dog like them. I told you the dog take on the nature of the person. <laughs> and, and matter of fact, I've seen dogs finicky like, like their owners. I mean, they prissy. You, know, you ever seen a prissy dog? And, and because the owner prissy, y'all help me today. I feel I feel like preaching today. Oh, I felt like, oh, I almost said something. I almost said something. But I'm going to keep that one to myself. But 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 it's, it's, so, it's so important that we get this message because God is saying something to us that he said to Noah and that generation. He said something to them. And what he said to nature, to, to Noah, the message that he gave to Noah was the message that was uh, predicated to them. Oh, y'all help me today. See, God talked about the people to Noah, but he didn't have Noah to talk about the people to them. Lord have mercy. <laughs> See, here is God describing the people to Noah, giving Noah the reasons why he's doing what he's about to do. God says he's, he gives his secrets to his prophet. <laughs> he, see, God ain't going to do nothing without letting you know what's getting ready to happen. Ooh, I feel like preaching. Somebody said, warning before destruction. See, when, when, when Noah found favor with God, he, he found charm with God. <laughs> he found elegance with God. He found acceptance with God. See, when you find favor with somebody, you got acceptance with them. Uh, that means that if you need a ride, you ain't got to call no Uber. <laughs> you don't need to call Lyft. If you, if, you got, if you got acceptance with somebody, you can call them and they'll come by Pee Wee and pick you up. See, I knew I had favor with, with, with you when I needed some, some welding done. I didn't go to a, a, a welding shop. I, I, got, I got Google on my phone, but I knew I had favor with my friend. So when I needed some welding done at my shop, I called him. And he said, and he didn't hesitate. He said, bring it on. He, he could have said, I got this to do, that to do, because he's, he, he, he's human just like me. And I know his day got things. He got some things he could be doing. But he decided because I found favor with him, he decided to stop what he was doing and told me to come on. I wish I had me some help around here. See, see you got to understand when you got favor with God, God will stop doing what he's doing to come see about you. <laughs> oh, uh, when you have favor with God, God, uh, uh, he gave you uh, a prerequisite. Watch this. So when you have favor with God, here's your prerequisite. Ask <laughs> and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open. I don't mean to say this on, on, on national streaming live and on Facebook and YouTube and all that, but, but I, I got to say it because you got to have a vision in order to obtain. Mm -hmm. I did say that earlier, didn't I? See, we, 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 we want a building. We want a nice size building. We're looking for a building. But, but see, you, you, you got to understand if you don't have faith, you ain't going to get nothing. Because faith got to have a target. Faith got to have something to go after, something uh, 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 tangible is see. Faith got to say, I see it, I'm going after it. Faith, faith says, I, I, oh. <laughs> see, faith seems like it's nagging. Somebody said it seems like a nagging. <laughs> see, that's what faith, faith is a nagger. Why, what, what you mean faith is a nagger? Because faith don't stop asking. <laughs> I said faith don't stop asking. <laughs> faith keep asking until it see what it want to see. I, I say I see it. And I'm not going to stop asking God until I see it, until I obtain it, because by faith, the elders obtain a good report. See, see, I, I, I get what I went after because I got faith. See, if you got something from God, that means you had faith to get it. Mm -hmm. And if you had faith to get that, God say, uh, I, I got some more for you, but it's going to take faith to get it. <laughs> oh, cast your faith in. Tell that neighbor, say, cast your faith in. <laughs> you ought to write that on down somewhere. <laughs> cast your faith in. You got more money than you think you got. Cast your faith in. Oh, <laughs> James, the brother of Jesus, said it like this. He said, faith without works is dead. He said, faith is your title deed. Uh-huh. If somebody asks you, say, where is your mansion? You tell them, it's in my faith. 
<laughs> where is that new car you said you're gonna get? It's in my faith. Where is that 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 um that business you said you're gonna have? It's in my faith. <laughs> Tell that neighbor, say you don't see it yet, but I promise you, you're gonna see it because my faith is not dead, my faith is alive. That's why I feel like preaching. That's why Noah started reacting on what God said for him to do right away. He started building the ark just like God told him to build it. He stopped getting the supplies just like God told him to get the supplies and he did it just like God told him to do it. And somebody say it was three stories. Three stories high. Uh huh. It was one door. I'm going to preach it the way I feel it. There was one door. There was one way in. Uh, did, did, did Facebook go off or something? Because I see that look on your face. Uh, uh, Aaron, something going wrong somewhere. Something going wrong. Uh, help us out. Help us out. Help us out. Uh, give them some direction. Tell them to go on YouTube or the, uh, the, uh, the web page or something. But, but listen. Listen to us. Listen to us. See, the ark had one door. And that one door was that it was only built for Noah his family, and the selected animals. They were the only ones who was selected to go through that door. Can I preach this thing the way I feel it? Uh, and the scripture also says there was one window. Somebody said one window. And that window was up high. David says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I believe, I do, I do, I do. I believe that God put that one window up there for, for several reasons and I'm going to deal with some. That he put that window up there so Noah and his family and even the animals can see that the same water that came down that caused the ark to float. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, I feel like preaching. The same water that came down that saved your life mm -hmm, would be the same water that's going to stop. Ooh, I feel like preaching. The same water that, that came down that saved your life is going to be the same water, somebody say, uh, that's going to a salve. <laughs> that's a word. That's a that's that's a that's a good word right there. Yeah, this, this, I'm, I'm gonna get there for y'all uh, 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 in a minute. See, you got to understand that the, the water. Somebody said the water abated. Yeah, the water abated and the water assuaged. Somebody said swayed. The, the water assuaged, meaning that the water stopped. And see, when, see, the water stopped. Watch this. It stopped in several ways. It stopped coming down and it stopped coming up. Oh, I feel like preaching. See, see, God got water under the ground and on top of the ground. Yeah, see, but watch this. See, the water that God has that's in the rivers. See, God had water that they, that watch this. Ooh, they, didn't, they didn't know God was this bad. They, they didn't know the rain was already in their possession. Because the Euphrates was already there. Mm -hmm. You go to Genesis chapter uh, number one. Uh, can I go over there for a minute? Can I go? Over? Let's go over there for a minute. Let's go over there for a minute. Let's go to Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis chapter uh, number number one. Number number one is it number one? Holy Spirit. Let's see. Let's see. Is it number one? Let's go over there. Let's go see what it is. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Let's go over there. Let's go over there and talk about that a little bit. Uh, here we go. Now, if you look over here in Genesis chapter number one. You will see in verse six, it says, and God said, let there be a firmament. And that would say in the midst of the waters. So water was already there. Is, is that not true? And divided the waters. Isn't that what it say? Which were under the firmament from the waters, which were above the firmament. So it was water down on the ground. Water was up in the sky. Isn't that what your Bible say? I know that's what mine says. And it was so somebody said it was so. So, and God called the firmament heaven and hello. And see, that's when you see, when you see rain coming down, it's coming down from heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. I ain't done. And God said, let the waters, isn't that what your Bible say? Under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so watch this. 
And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters. He called it what? He called it seas. And God saw that it was what? Isn't that in your Bible? In good in your Bible? It's showing mine. Now, I ain't done because I got some more reading to do. If you go over in chapter number two, uh, no, one, want to take you further. Let's go, let's go to one a little further. Let's go to verse number uh, 20 in, in Genesis chapter one. I'm just going to prove a point that water was already there. And, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great what? Whales. Whales don't swim on, on dirt. Whales swim in the sea. In a, you, you can't put a, a whale in an aquarium. <laughs> oh, boy. The, the whale's aquarium is the sea. That's the only thing big enough for a whale. You, you don't even see a whale in a river. I'm, I'm done. I'm done preaching that. But, but I, I just had to say that because it's important that you understand that, that God is awesome in his, in his doings. Because in chapter 2, I want to show you something in chapter 2. Let me show you something in chapter 2. I got to do it. I got to do it. It's just me. That's good, That's good teaching, Holy Spirit. I got to do it. Now, go over to chapter number 2 and look at, uh, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, let's, let's go to verse number 14. Verse 14 says, and the name of the third river. So there were several rivers. If you, you go to Pison and, 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 and Havilon, or Havilah, Havilah and Pison. Those are other two. And it says, and, and watch this. And it says the name of the second river is Guyon. The same, and the same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. The name of the third river is, is uh, Hidekea. That is it which goeth toward the east of, of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So rivers was already on the ground, already on the earth when Noah was here. Right? So, so, so in other words, God said, Noah, I'm getting ready to flood the earth mm -hmm, with what I already have in my possession. Yeah, I already have water in heaven. I already have water on the earth. And I'm getting ready to flood the earth with what's already there. Lord have mercy. Ooh. And, 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 and God's, in, in God's mind, because I say what was in God's mind, God, God, God was saying in his mind, can't nobody outswim this water. <laughs> see, 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 uh, Jackie, here, here's some, some powerful stuff right here. Not only could no one outswim the water? If it wasn't for God, Noah couldn't outfloat the water. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> See, because God had to dry the water up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He had to pull the water back to heaven and send the water back to the sea, send the water back to the river in order for Noah and his family and the animals to be on dry land. Somebody help me. Revelations 3 and verse number 7 says, I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. He says, if I open the door, can no man shut it. If I close the door, can no man open it. So here we go. Nor and his family and the animals would have been stuck on the other side if God didn't open the door. Ooh. <laughs> See, not only do God slams the door, he opens the door. See, God will slam a door he don't want you to come out of until he open it. Oh, I feel like preaching. <laughs> I'm looking at my message. <laughs> he slams some doors. Good God Almighty. So I wouldn't go through the door. Until he opened it. Y'all better help me. I feel like preaching. I feel like, see, see, somebody said when God had enough, when God had enough, there's no stopping him. Nowhere in the Bible have I ever read that God was grieved. <laughs> but here in Ephesians, it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Did it say it? 
Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Quench not the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. So here is God in Genesis being grieved by the wickedness of the people. By the lifestyles of the people. Y'all better get this. By the lifestyles of the people, God had enough. So let me tell you something. Even if you don't, if you're not saved, I'm going to throw this out there. Even if you're not saved, you need to start doing some straightening. Uh, I heard my bishop Jones say something today. He said that when he got saved, before he got saved, he was a, he was a, a, a alcoholic. And while being an alcoholic, he couldn't help himself. No, no, the doctors, he went to doctors, he went to psychologists, they gave him pills and everything. They gave him nothing worked, but he was still an alcoholic. He said that somebody told him to try Jesus. I feel like preaching. He tried Jesus. He gave his life to the Lord. And when he gave his life to the Lord, it impacted others around him like Noah. It impacted those around him to, in, in such a degree because they had seen him before he got saved. And because they saw him before he got saved, they saw his struggle. They saw him uh, try to stop drinking, but he was still a drunk. But when he gave his life to the Lord, they, they, they said, we're going to wage a bet that he ain't going to last too long. But they lost their money because he's still saved right now today. Not only is he saved, I, I, I was making a point when I told y'all, y'all need to straighten your life out even if you're not saved because his brother saw him and it was so impactful on his brother, his brother stopped drinking. Lord have mercy. His brother stopped drinking and he didn't even give his life to the Lord. He stopped drinking because of the impact his brother had on him. If he can stop drinking, surely... <laughs> I can stop drinking. I feel like preaching. I heard somebody say if, if they came to visit Philippians, uh -huh, and they looked up and saw me sitting up on the pulpit. They saw me sitting uh, in my seat. And they looked up there and they said, oh, no, that ain't Mincy. I know that ain't Mincy sitting up there. But then at the end of the service, when they found out it was me, they said, surely if you can be saved, there's hope for me. I come to tell you the reason why Noah's children got on the boat of the ark. The reason why Noah's wife got on the ark. The reason why the animals got on the ark. Because they trusted Noah. Ooh, you got to help me today. You got to have a, such a lifestyle that would impact people that they'll be willing to follow you anywhere. They ain't never seen no ark before Pee Wee. But they saw the leader walking on there. <laughs> ain't no question about the man being the head of the woman. They ain't got no, no question about that. They ain't got nothing to do with strength. They ain't got nothing to do with how smart. It don't have nothing to do with how much money you make. It, 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 got to have, it has to do with God's plan. Because when God told Noah to build an ark, he meant for everybody to follow Noah on the ark. Because Noah was their symbol of safety. He, can I go this? Can I go there? Uh, 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 can I go there? Y'all ready for this? And I'm and I'm and I'm gonna shut down. I'm gonna shut down after I say this. The Bible says in in Joel two twenty eight. This is a prophecy. He prophesied in the Old Testament what was going to happen in the New Testament in Acts chapter two. He said in the last days. That's why. How can you hear? without a preacher and how can he preach except he be sent nor was a type of preacher he was a type of God's mouthpiece he spoke for God and because he because he said what God told him it caused those who believed in him to follow him so ooh, you about to line your life up so so and then he says in, in, in Joel 2 2 28 he says in the last days I'm gonna pour out of my spirit upon upon somebody say upon all flesh your sons and your daughters will say what I say did y'all get that your sons and your daughters would say what I say. Now, I ain't saying nothing about getting in no line to get you a prophetic word. Didn't say nothing about that. What it says is they're going to say what I say. In other words, you could be lying in bed, sleep, 
And God can speak to you and tell you, I need you to take this message to so-and-so and and -and so-and-so. And you get up and you take that message to so-and-so and and -and so-and-so. You are prophesying in God's stead. You, 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 you becoming God's mouthpiece at that time. See, that's why you ought not hesitate to share the gospel. You, you, you ought not hesitate to share your story. Your story, watch this, and, and, and it bothers me when people tell you not to testify. Because your, your, testify, your testimony is anointed. Yeah, let me say that one more time. Your testimony is anointed because if God is in you, he is the hope of glory. He's the one that bringing hope to the people on the outside of you. Lord have mercy. It ain't me. It ain't you. It's the power of the gospel. It's it's the power of the word, the word that's in you, the word that's in me. And, 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 And then he said, we have this unction of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I got an unction. So I can function. So that's Joel chapter 2, 28. Then he goes over the Acts. And in the book of Acts, he's, he, he, what he prophesied in, in, in Joel, God brought it to pass in the book of Acts. Somebody said Pentecost. Now, you, you, you got to understand Pentecost. And I'm, 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 a close my, I'm getting ready to close my notes. So y'all mean, y'all know what that means. That means you're going to get something uh, in, in, on, on Miracle Monday. And you're going to get something on Tuesday. I got I got I put my lunch up because I gotta save some of my some of my, my, my stuff for for tomorrow and Tuesday. I got to say this because it's important. On Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost on Pentecost, right? The Bible says that there was a rushing mighty wind. It wasn't no hurricane, <laughs> wasn't no tornado. It was the Holy Ghost. Somebody said Holy Ghost. Jesus said, there will one come after me whose fan uh, is in his hand. And, and, and he shall thoroughly purge his floor. And he said, and that is the Holy Ghost. See, that's, see what we got to understand is when the Holy Ghost comes into our lives, it purges us. It takes that which is unclean out and put that which is clean in. And, and, and that's what makes it so, so awesome because it's not the outside that matters. It's the inside. <laughs> See, if the Holy Ghost, watch this, if the Holy Ghost wanted to clean up your outside, he'll come on the outside. But he didn't come to clean up your outside, but he came to clean up your inside and your inside will have an effect on your outside, I'm going to close. I'm going to close. This is where I'm going to close at right here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I heard you. He told me to say this. I'm going to say it. John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist and Jesus. John the Baptist was baptizing, right? In the water unto repentance. God said it repented him that he created Humanity, right? So God changed his mind. John was baptizing people to change their mind. Who had a mind changed? Watch this. Here come a revelation. Uh, He was baptizing people who had a mind change because there were some that came and he said, who warned you of the wrath to come? Did not he say it? Who warned you vipers? (laughs) <laughs> who warned you of the wrath to come? Y'all get out the line because your mind ain't changed. Your mind got to be right. God never would have saved me in 1979, in the month of September of 1979. He never would have saved me if my mind wasn't right. My mind was right. I was sitting in the back of the church. My mind was right. I went to church. Watch this. I went to church because I wanted to be saved. That's why I went to church. I wanted to change life. I wanted, I did. I wanted God. I did. I wanted, I went to church because I wanted God. I didn't go for no other reason. I didn't go, I didn't go because I wanted to stop running behind the women. I didn't go because I wanted to stop going to the club. I didn't want to, I didn't stop because I wanted to stop snorting cocaine. I didn't, I didn't go to church because I wanted to stop dealing dope. I did not. I went to church because I wanted God. 
And I was the only one. Yeah, that about say cool that about say. And I was the only one that night. Church packed full of people on television and radio. Uh, the whole greater whole of the temple, Church of God in Christ. You know. I'm sitting in the back of the church, packed out. Nobody got saved that night but me. Nobody came to the oh! Nobody eat a shot. Nobody came to the altar that night but me because God wanted to put me on the spotlight. He wanted to put me, and I, I promise you right now today, if you if you talk to people who was there, they would tell you, I remember that night. You was the only one standing up there. And they remember. And God let them remember so he can remind me. You were standing up there by yourself and you called out to God. You cried like a baby. Yes, I did. I cried because I, that was my moment. That was my moment because I wasn't planning on going up. I wasn't. I didn't know that was a part of the, the plan. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know me wanting God was going was gonna to have me standing up in the middle of the church by myself or watch this or, or, and not on my own volition. I had no, I, I, I promise you, I wanted, I wanted to be saved because he, he made the altar appeal. I wanted to be saved, but I didn't want to be the one, only one up there. And God put me on the spot. He had me to come up out of my seat and stand up there by myself. And I put through my hands in the air and I asked the Lord to come into my heart. And I, my life has never been the same since that day. Have I been perfect? No, he have. <laughs> Glory to God. See, see that which is perfect, make that which is imperfect perfect. Uh huh. In situations, yeah. <laughs> see, see, I have not always been perfect, but I, I promise you, because he's perfect, uh, the same situations I'm perfect in. The, the 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 situations where I used to fail at, uh, Pee Wee, I don't fail at them no more. Why? Because he's perfect. He he taught me how to overcome those situations. Y'all help me today. See, see, you. The reason why you're not perfect in some situations is because you're a repeated offender. He who sinneth, uh huh. Is of the devil. See, you. E, I told y'all early on, you can't. The, uh, the, the Holy Spirit and the devil can't occupy the same space at the same time. The reason why you can't change your ways is because you, you have your desire have not changed. Your will have not changed. You, you still want to please the devil. Yeah, you still want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still want to feed that flesh. You, you still want to uh, 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 entertain the appetite of your flesh. That's why you can't see no change. Because one thing God won't do, he'll do a lot of things, but one thing, another thing he won't do, he will not work against your will. Not to serve him. He ain't going to make you serve him. He'll make you do a lot of things, but he ain't going to make you serve him. Because if he make you serve him, you'll be a robot. He'll always have to be on you. he always have to be on you. Do this, do that, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. Uh-uh. No, he want me to do it on my own will. He want me to be presented with some people and say, I hate that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I I eschew evil. I hate evil. He wants you to hate it. He wants you just like some food some of us won't eat. Because we don't like it. There's some things that never touch my mouth. Because I looked at it and said, I don't like that. I don't know the day of whether I like it or not. Because every time I see it, I said, mm -mm, I don't eat that. But I'll never know what I'm missing if I don't eat it. David said it best, and I'm going to close. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want to say this to somebody right now today. I want to say this to you. How do you know God is not real? Uh, if you've never found out on your own, if you've never found out for yourself, you'll never know. I was making a point when I said Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist Hear me. John the Baptist in his mother's womb. Mary, the mother of Jesus, came around with him in her belly. John the Baptist leaped. Yeah. Hmm. John the Baptist leaped in his mother's womb and was baptized with the Holy Ghost. And his mama. Both of them was baptized with the Holy Ghost because Jesus came around. I ain't done. Watch this. I'm going to close. It didn't say they, they, they had a tarot service. It didn't say uh, John the Baptist in the womb was Jesus, 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 Jesus. I ain't bothering y'all. that I, I'm not bothering y'all to do that because if, if, that's, if that's your prayer time, then you need, to, you need to do it. But I am saying this. 
It's either you have it or you don't. I am going to say that. I remember this like it was yesterday. November the 14th, uh, 1979, I got baptized at Greater Holy Temple in water. When I got baptized, the Holy Ghost fell on me like I, I promise you. I, 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 I saw it coming on me. I'm in the water. I almost cook, took all the water out the pool. <laughs> I leaped so with that fire of the Holy Ghost on me. I leaped and watch this. They had, they were still doing tarry service. And I got on the altar and I was tearing. I didn't know what that was. I was doing it. A minister walked over me, to me and he said, you already got it. I said, oh, okay. I think I know what he meant. I got up. Never did it again. I'm in my living room. Young man. Had to be about 23, 24. Derek Mercer was living with me. He'll tell you. I'm in my living room and I'm watching PTL on television. They was in Hawaii. That's why I believe I love, I always love Hawaii as a little boy. I'm watching it. I said, boy, I said, ooh. I said, Lord, I want to I want to go over there with them. I did. I said, I want to go over there with them. They was praising. I mean, like we were doing this morning, they was praising God. They was having worship service. They were speaking in tongues. They was this praising in tongues. Everything I heard was in tongues. And I said, Lord, I want that. And I want to go right over there in Hawaii with them so I could be doing just what they're doing. I want you to hear me because this is real. I had an out-of-body experience. I, I felt my spirit lift up out of my body. I'm, my body's still in the living room, I promise you. God is my witness. I'm look I'm on I'm in Hawaii in that service with them and I could see my body in through like I'm looking at TV, see him looking at myself. And I'm in Hawaii, watch this. And and I'm in Hawaii, my spirit is in Hawaii, and I'm and I'm and I'm worshiping in tongues. In tongues. Because to me, I read the scripture wrong. That's why it's good to to not and misinterpret the scripture. I, I misinterpret the scripture when Paul said that tongues are a sign for unbelievers. Y'all hear me? And I thought, when I saw people in the church speaking in tongues, I said, well, they're just a non-believer. <laughs> I believe God. <laughs> it's the truth. I'm, I'm telling on myself. I said, they don't believe God. I do. So I don't need to speak in tongues. I did say that. But that day, <laughs> glory to God, that day, the Holy Spirit, I was, oh, I would go, I went off in tongues and here now, now, now I got the experience in Hawaii. So I, my spirit returns back to my body. This young man is, is ringing the doorbell selling. He was in college selling magazines. I opened the door speaking in tongues. I want y'all to hear me. I opened the door speaking in tongues, invite him in the house. I'm speaking in tongues. He throws his hands up and give his life to the Lord. And I'm speaking in tongues. Are y'all hearing me? He understood, yeah, Ooh. he heard. See, he interpreted what I was saying in tongues and, and gave his life to the Lord, standing right in that living room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ha. I say that to say this. I didn't, I didn't, I did not, I, I won't say I didn't believe in the Holy Spirit, but I just didn't know you can get it like that. I thought you had to be a non-believer. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. You could be ignorant of the scripture. <laughs> and I was. I was a babe and I was ignorant of the scripture. But I, and that, and this, and that was one year. I've been saved for one year. And, and it went that long just like that. And God did it. I said that to say there's some things you could not understand about the scripture. There's some things you can misunderstand about the scripture and there's some things you can misinterpret about the scripture which leads me to this Romans chapter 10 says the word is near you even in your mouth the word of faith which we preach 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. Said for with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It also says, how can we hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Oh, how beautiful are the feet of them who brings good tidings. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall and will be saved. You drop down to verse 17. It says, how, watch this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you heard the word of God today, you have faith. You have pistis. You have belief. You have faith enough to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why God gave us his word so we can believe him more and more. I want you to know you might have faith the size of a mustard seed today, but later on you have a seed, you have faith the size of Mount Ariat if you just keep on hearing the word of God. So I say to you, if you want to be saved today, you heard what I said. I, I repeated the scriptures for you. All you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. That's all you got to do and say, Lord, I want to be saved. If that's you, go to our website. Go right now, tiacjax.org slash connect. Fill out the form. That's all you got to do. Just fill the form out. Let us know it's a card. Let us know, hey, that was me. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. Go to the website. I'll say it again. tiacjax.org slash connect. And fill out the form. Go out. Go into our app also. We do have an app, the I Am Church app. Go to the app, fill out the card. It's right there. And just say, hey, that was me. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And somebody will reach out to you. Again, thank you for uh, viewing us. Amen. Today on Amen YouTube. For those of you who was on Facebook. Also, those of you who went to our website. I don't know if there was a technical difficulty somewhere. But if it is, you can always go back and get the message again. Aaron is a good director of media. And I know Aaron do everything he can to make things Make sure everything's perfected. Make sure everything's correct. Make sure everything's right. So if you happen to be on and you went off, it was disconnected for some uh, reason or another, you can always reconnect on, on this evening or now. Amen. I believe Aaron will get everything together. Again, thank you for being with us. Thank my friend. Amen. Thank you, Pee Wee. Amen. Thank you, Ronald, uh, brother. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today, brother. I'm so 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 glad to have you, amen, to uh, slip in on me. You said you was going to do it. You're a man of your word. You did just that. Thank God for all of you all again. Thank God for my beautiful bride, amen, my wife, amen, Jack, a, Lady J, amen. Thank God for Lady J, amen. She's a, she's a joy to have. Just this joy that I have, amen, she's a joy to have, and I'm so glad to have her in my life, I could sing a song. But listen, also we want to give you an opportunity to give. Also go to uh, YouTube, go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. We need subscribers, subscribers, subscribers. Anytime I go to YouTube and I see uh, someone and, I'm, and I enjoy the message, I subscribe to that channel. Please, please, please go to the I Am Church app. Amen. And go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Tell others, amen. Let it let it spread like wildfire because, you know, if something good to us, y'all know what we do. We share it with somebody else. We'll tell others about it. Go to a good restaurant, I'll tell somebody, man, that food good over there. <laughs> so somebody else can go, I ain't going to talk about pork. Uh, you know, I said I don't eat pork, and then somebody told reminds me, uh, even if I stopped last week, I still eat it. So <laughs> it ain't going to do me no good. I say I don't eat pork, so I'm not well going back and start eating it again. Because <laughs> I believe for the rest of my life I'm gonna be told that story. You said you don't eat pork, but you ate pork that day, so I got my well going to start eating me some pork chops. <laughs> well, it's the truth, though. Amen. Amen. It don't bother all of us. It just bothers some of us because it sure don't bother me. Amen. But I just did it for health reasons. I just. Thought it was a thing to do, so I did. But they don't bother me. They really don't. But again, we thank God. Please, 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 please. We thank you for your giving. 
Amen. Your free will given, your support to the I Am Church. You've been so nice and so good. Amen. Sharing with us in the past. And we're so, so grateful for it. And we just want to let you know we still need your support. We need you to partner with us. We, I need some partners. If you can, if I can feed you spiritual things, surely you can share your carnal things. Amen. With the Lord. But we do need you. We do. We need you to be a partner. A, a partner who says, you know what, well, I'm a partner with them every month. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this amount every month to the I Am Church. I'm, I'm going I'm to vow this, Lord. I, I'm going to pledge this, that I want to be a supporter, a partner, because I've seen many of you, you're already partners because you view us all the time. But we need you to also send us something tangible. Send us a little a little something, something. You know, it, I, I, it don't matter the amount because all amounts are important. Amen. The, the woman gave her a little bit. She gave all she had, and Jesus was pleased with it. Uh, the uh, who was that? That was um, uh, Mary Magdalene. She broke that alabaster box. One wheel, one year wages. That's how valuable that was. And she broke that alabaster box on Jesus' precious feet because she valued him that much. So. Your, your amount don't matter, but we do want you to be a support to us. You go to the I Am Church uh, Cash App. Also, you can give by going on downloading our app, the church app. You can give on the church app. It is so uh, self-explanatory. It walks you through the steps on how you can give on the church app. And also, if you want to give, amen. Cash App is Cash The I Am Church. Cash T H E. I am church. Make sure you say cash T H E the I am church and not uh, I am church because we have given to a lot of churches by that making that mistake, Pee Wee. So we want to make sure uh, we have it spelled out so you can get that right. Cash T H E the I am church. Amen. Cash the I am church. Please, please, please be a giver. Be a giver. God loves a ch- what? A cheerful giver. He loves an excited giver. Amen. He says, as a man, a purpose in his heart, so let him what? Give. Paul said, lay aside what you're going to do. Amen. So when you get to church on Sunday, you'll already have it ready. Is that not what the word says? So we want to follow, amen, suit with God. And he says, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together, running over. God says he will cause men to give into your bosom. That's how you got that raise. I heard you tell me, I'm going to testify for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to testify for you. That's how you got that raise because you faithfully give to God. And when you give to God, God will give back to you. Shake, press down, shaking together, running over. He says he would cause men, he would cause the places where you work to give you a raise, to give you increase. He'll cause men pursue you and say hey i need you to come on and get on this project with me I, i'm getting ready to start this new venture and i need you to come in and work it with me god will cause people to do that and we just have to know that our faithfulness and our seeds cause that increase to come into our life god bless you amen we, we're, we're grateful thank you again for being with us we'll see you tomorrow tune in tomorrow 8 15 Amen. And you will see us on live streaming live again. If I don't make no mistake, y'all know I've been I've been messing up, but I ain't gonna mess up on, on this coming Monday. Miracle Monday. Somebody say Miracle Monday. Say thank God for miracles. He is a miracle worker. Again, we thank God for you. Amen. Come back and God, we need you to come live. That's what that's what I want to say. We want you to come and visit us live, like my friend. Amen. We want you to come and visit us at the I Am Church 2061. Edgewood Avenue West, 2061 Edgewood Avenue West. I want you to agree with us that we're going to find a building. Amen. I want you to agree with us that we're going to find a building. We're going to obtain a building for us, the I Am Church, so we can have us a big old sign out there saying the I Am Church. We want you to agree with us on that. Also, we want you to agree with us that God is going to send the money. He's going to send the money. Amen. We believe God going to do it. Lift that right hand with me and, say, and repeat after me. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, 
in all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Look across the room and say, neighbor, before you leave, you owe me love, so give it up. God bless you. Thanks for watching and we hope you were blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at TIAC Jacks and like us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.